Good morning and welcome to Daily Devotions with Pastor Joe. For this morning, I thought I would just dive into the book of Acts, chapter 26, where I'm reading with the Machine reading calendar and see how it goes from there. Um, if you need a copy of the Machine reading calendar, you can find them on the web. The Machine reading calendar, basically, Robert Murray Machine designed a, a organized format of how to read the Bible to read the entire Old Testament once, New Testament, and Psalms twice through the course of the year so that he and his parishioners could be on the same page in the Bible throughout the year so he would know uh, the, the words they were reading, how best to adequately bring messages from those portions of Scripture. And so I, I enjoy using the machine reading calendar. It's, it's pleasant, it's good, it's well organized, and it helps me to get through the Bible. So let's read Acts 26. This is one of four passages for today. It says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. Or in other words, when I was a child, they knew me, they knew me from my youth, and that all the Jews around me uh, know how I've lived since I was a young boy. Which knew me from the beginning, if, I, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived, a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. So in other words, <clears throat> I'm under accusation because of the promise that the Jews were waiting on. He's making it very clear that what he's standing for is the re hope of the resurrection in Jesus Christ. Um, verse 8, Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blasphemy, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Or in other words, over the past several months, couple of years of his life, before his conversion, he said, before he was, was saved, before he had his Damascus Road uh, moment, Paul is saying that he was contrary to Jesus. He was, he was going against Jesus of Nazareth. And from Jerusalem on outward, he took the Christians and put them in prison um, under the authority of the chief priests who gave him permission to do so. And when they were put to death, he gave his voice against them. He was one of the testifiers against them. He punished them in every synagogue, compelled them to blasphemy, told, called them blasphemers, and was exceedingly angry with them, and persecuted them even unto strange cities. And you know, Paul was uh, doing his best in a way to to do what he believed was right according to the religion of the Jews. But he knew, something deep down inside, he knew that... Jesus was the Messiah and that he was going against Jesus here. And, and something there that was there itching in the back of his mind the whole time, I'm sure, as he's there um, killing Stephen and different other ones, holding the coats for the ones who uh, stoned Stephen, different things of that sort. Verse 12, Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. What an interesting experience that is. So he was surrounded by light, him and the people with him. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me saying, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And that phrase is very interesting. It's it's talking about 
when you would be plowing with oxen. You would have something behind them that when they kicked it, it would hurt their feet, or at least in some way to get them to stop kicking at you, so they wouldn't kick as often. And so when you kick against the pricks, it, it'd be the the it'd be something that was trying to push you towards uh, where you were meant to go. And so he's saying, basically, Paul, why are you fighting against my will for you? Why are you struggling against me when I'm trying to uh, bring you to a place where you belong, the place where you belong? Verse 15, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. That would have shaken my, me right to the core if I were, were to hear that from Jesus. Verse 16, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee, for this purpose. So Jesus is saying that I have a purpose for you, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. And really, I, I would just like to note that we're all ministers and witnesses in some way. We are to minister the word to the word, we are to witness of the word and of what God has done. That is a call specifically for Paul here, but really generally for all of us, we could say that this really is the call that Jesus gives with uh, with the Great Commission. He's very clearly saying that we are to all go into all parts of the world. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Or in other words, Jesus is going to take care of him from the Jews and the Gentiles where he's going. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Or in other words, to bring the word to them that they might also be uh, saved and sanctified. Whereupon, Paul is speaking again, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Or in other words, he immediately turned out and started preaching the gospel. And that's a dramatic change in his life. And that's a change God can work in any life to dramatically change from one to another. Uh, people who say, I've struggled for so long with, with uh, be it alcohol, tobacco, pornography, or something else. When you turn to God, He and, and you mean it with repentance. You say, God, I mean it. I want to repent from my sins. God can enable you to live above those sins and, and to be free from them. If you really mean it, you can be free from those sins. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Of course, they would. They hated the Christian religion. They hated the idea of Jesus um, taking their power from them and authority from them. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue to this day. In other words, if it weren't for God, I wouldn't, be, wouldn't have made it, but God has helped me. Witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. That Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And with that in mind, you know, we know that he had raised Lazarus from the dead, but Lazarus was to die again. We know that that men through through time there were periods where men were seen to have risen from the dead, but then to die again, or, or to go away, as it were, to, to to death once more. So Jesus is the first and only to rise from the dead and remain that way, to rise and stay risen. And as he thus spake, verse 24, for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. And people take this out of quote, much learning doth make thee mad. It, he was mocking Paul and saying, you've studied too much and you've gone insane because of your studies. You're, you're beside yourself, you're nuts, he said. But he said, Paul said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth the, of these things, before whom I also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. Then he turns to King Agrippa, and he says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said to Paul, unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me. 
to be a Christian. And I've read several commentators on this part. Some say it, it exactly as it reads. You've almost got me persuaded, Paul, but not quite. Others say, well, no, it actually means that he's saying, oh, you're trying to persuade me in too little of time. But it doesn't seem, even with the way the words are, it seems like this is a, the better meaning of the two. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Uh, using the term Christian, it was a term of scorn. It was not a term that was used for good. You know, nobody said Christian in a good light then, just as many people don't say Christian in a good light now. It was a term of scorn to say, oh, you're a little Christ. You're a little Jesus in this world. You're, you're, you're being a follower of him. And, and it was a scorn. And so Agrippa has said, you're trying and you've almost got me to join that ragtag band of Christians, those, those scorned and mocked people. And, and unfortunately, that's where a lot of people leave off. Almost persuaded, but then something in this life or something in this world, or maybe the fear of being mocked as a Christian, stops them. And they come just short of, of Christianity and they give in to the world and stay that way. But then we hear in verse 29, And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and altogether such as I am. And the reason that verse 28 seems to really mean what it says instead of meaning the other is because of verse 29, he's using the same sort of term here, both almost and altogether as I am. Or in other words, he's saying, uh, you say you're almost persuaded. I wish everyone was almost and even completely persuaded of Christ. Of, of everything, as, as Paul is, accept these bonds. He says, oh, you know, I wish everybody was a Christian just without the stocks and bonds that I have to wear. Verse 30, And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor and, and Bernice, Bernice, and they that sat with them, and when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty, if he had not appealed unto Caesar. And, see, earlier in, in these passages, he had talked about being a Roman, and, and that's kind of how he got out of being beaten or hurt or tortured, and how he made uh, a mockery of, of, like, the high priests and different ones. Because as a Roman citizen, you weren't supposed to uh, suffer any abuse without first being judged by the Romans. Well, he made his appeal to Caesar, or else Agrippa was ready to set him free, Except now he wasn't allowed. He was no longer permitted to do that because now the case was going to Caesar, going to Rome. And so, unfortunately, Paul uh, may have made a mishap in speaking out about being a Roman citizen and about Caesar, uh, perhaps. There, there could have been a better way of getting around it. But God, through all of this, is working in Paul's life to bring him to the right people, to be the right witness and testimony. He may have been the last hope that Agrippa and Festus had. He might have been the last Christian who got the opportunity to witness to them. We don't know. We do not know if Agrippa ever got past verse 28 of being almost persuaded to be a Christian. We just know that Paul did his best to be faithful, and he was clear. He said, I know that you believe. I know that there's something in you that believes in what I'm saying, and that this is a compelling truth for you. He, he knew, but Agrippa refused it. And so just, you know, little bits and pieces of this passage as Paul's life is marching along before he goes off to Rome to be in bonds for forever, <laughs> um, for the rest of his life. Just continue. I'm going to continue reading through this. I don't know if I'll get back to it with you all, but it's a good passage to me, seeing Paul's testimony is just really good, uh, really encouraging to me. We're all meant to rise up, stand up, and to fulfill his purpose for our lives, Jesus' purpose for our lives, which is to be a minister and a witness. And really, we should be out there reaching the lost, opening their eyes, turning them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, so that they might receive forgiveness and inheritance among the sanctified by faith. So that's what I've been reading. That's 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 a part of where I've been reading in uh, the machine reading calendar. Um, hopefully you guys have a great day in the Lord. Be careful out there. It's real snowy here where we are. Hopefully it's not where you are.
God bless. I hope you have a great day in the Lord. I'll see you later on another Daily Devotions with Pastor Joe.